Trusting him, I will not lose heart. Yeah. My God is a mountain mover. My God's gonna make a way. Can't count all the times he's proven. We can trust him, just have me. Take a hopeless situation, but just turn it all around. Nothing is impossible. Can't hold back, I gotta shout.
you go before I know that you've come to win now you come back with the head of my enemy you come back can't you come
This is how I fight my battle. I fight with prayer. This is how I fight my battle. I fight with prayer. You go before me. You find my battle. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a praise in the house. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. This is our fight, my friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Glory, 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 glory. Praise the Lord. All right, so we're going to do everything. In, we're going to do this in reverse. What do you mean? Well, I, I'm going to preach now. Then we're going to have a bunch of announcements. We're going to talk about VBS. We had an average of uh, 45, 50 kids every night for VBS. It was an amazing thing. We're going to talk about how great things are going in the Corn Fest, but I think we wore out all the kids because the kids didn't show up today. <laughs> but we are going to have uh, a reverse service this morning, if that's okay. So, so here's what I need to happen. I need the band to stay with me because this is all about worship. So. What, what you can do, what you can do is you can take a little, uh, a, a little break, but stay close by, stay close by. Not yet, not yet, but I don't want to wear you out or, you know, or wear the rest of the band out. But we're going we're gonna to preach a little bit. So, so you guys, just stay close. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. An old farmer went to the city one weekend and attended the big city church. And he came home and his wife asked, how good uh, was the service? Well, said the farmer, it was good. They did something different, however. They sang praise choruses instead of hymns. Praise courses, his wife said. What, what are those? He said, well, you know, they're kind of like hymns, but they're different. Well, well, his wife said, well, what's the difference? He said, the farmer said, well, it's like this. If I were to say to you, Martha, the cows are in the corn, well, that would be a hymn. But on the other hand, if I were to say to you, Martha, 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 Oh, Martha, 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 the cows, the big cows, the brown cows, the black cows, the white cows, the black and white cows, the cows, the cows, the cows are in the corn, in the corn, in the corn, 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 corn. And if I did that about three or four times in a row, that would be a praise chorus, Martha. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going into a new series. It's going to be called Multi-Directional Worship. In order to have a healthy church, you've got to have a balance of, of several things. One, you need to have evangelism. You also need to have discipleship. You need to have ministry. You need to have fellowship. And then you need to have worship. A healthy body will grow and a healthy church will grow. Amen. Say that with me. A healthy body will grow and a healthy church will grow. 
So we, we've taught ministry with our growth track. We've had revivals. I've brought in evangelists. We've taught discipleship. We've enjoyed fellowship nights on Wednesday nights. But every year, I want to make sure that we take time to teach on worship. So over the next four weeks, we're going to talk about upward worship. Say that with me, upward worship. Inward worship. Outward worship. And downward worship. Uh, let me, you know, the upward worship is our relationship to God. The, down, the inward worship is God's relationship with us. The, 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 uh, our relationship with our neighbors and our friends and the community is our outward worship. Somebody shout outward worship. And the breaking of the chains of the devil, that's downward worship. Somebody shout praise the Lord. How many want to break some chains this morning? Did you know that God wants to speak to us uh, and, and be a part of our, everything we do in our lives? Did you know that reaching others is worship? Did you realize that, that uh, we actually took Satan's place to worship God when he was kicked out of heaven? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And did you realize that the devil hates us? Yes, he does. Uh, how many know that? Well, so we're going to talk about all these things over the next four weeks. And the last, the last week, I, uh, we're going to talk about uh, six reasons the devil hates us. But this morning, we're going to talk about upward worship. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Isaiah 6, chapter 6. And we're going to start with the first uh, chapter and the first verse. And we're going to read just the part that says, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet, and with two, he flew. Can you imagine this? And one cried to another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And, and the um, post of the door were shaken by the voice of him, talking about those angels that were, were, were crying holy, uh, the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. Put your hands toward me right now. Father, I know that, that I can't do anything without you. I can't uh, breathe. I can't live without you. I can't certainly preach without you. But Lord, with you, we can say great things happen this morning. We can, we can understand, Lord, your word through your revelation to us this morning. So, we, so I ask you, God, to, to bless me, to anoint me, to preach your word, your word which is already anointed, your word which will not come back void, but will accomplish what it's sent out to do. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. <laughs> Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. Somebody say that with me. High and lifted up. Say it with me. The Lord is high and lifted up. The first direction we must always go to in worship is upward. When God, when God called Isaiah into his ministry, he gave him a glimpse of heaven in that vision when he saw God high and lifted up. 
It reminds us of what John saw in the book of Revelation when, he, when, when John saw four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest night or day, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Do you realize right now, right now, around the throne of God, they're crying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, hallelujah, who was and is and is to come. And the angels are created beings. They don't understand what it's like to be saved, but we do. How much more should we cry, holy, holy, holy? Give him praise if you believe it. God showed Isaiah. God showed Isaiah his glory and the beauty of his holiness, as David would call it. Uh, you, you need this morning to get a glimpse of the power, of the majesty, of the glory of God himself in order to worship him in spirit and in truth. You must begin to worship him upward. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to worship him upward. You might say this morning, you might be saying prayer, praise, worship. What's the difference? Well, prayer is the op occupation of our human needs and problems. We come to God for him to supply us all our needs uh, according to his riches and glory. Praise is the occupation of our minds with his blessings. We are thinking of all that God has done for us and give thanks to him for blessing us. And then worship is the occupation with God himself, with the greatness of his being. This is why some of the hymns you hear, they'll say, Lord, save me. When we say, Lord, save me, this is uh, a prayer. Lord, save me. Anybody ever say that? Lord, save me. Lord, help me. Uh, but when you, we say, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Uh, how many ever said, thank you, Lord, for saving me? Then this is praise. But when we say, thank you, Lord, for being a great Savior, this is worship. Somebody give him praise in this house. To really understand worship and praise, uh, you have to break down the words in the Hebrew and Greek to really understand the meaning. So what I want to do this morning is I want to take some scriptures and explain to you the different uh, meanings of the Hebrew and or Greek this morning so you can get a greater understanding. Uh, for the Lord is great. Here's, here's the scripture, Psalms 96.4. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Now, I gave you a little bit of this on Wednesday night. I spent about 15, 20 minutes on it. And so we're going to touch on that a little, and, and, and then, then we're going to worship him this morning. What I want to do this morning is to practice some praise. Is that all right? Is it all right? You know, you get better at something when you practice. So I want to practice some praise this morning. So for, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols but the Lord made the heavens. The word praise there is the word yada, and it is a power praise. It means to worship with the extended hand, declaring God worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Yada is a power praise. It, it demonstrates an action or extension of our hands in a relationship to the 
power of God when we confess that God is the one that we're worshiping and praising. Our confession is of his worthiness. He is worthy. There is a certain power involved or released when we praise him in this manner. We are calling on God with a power salute, if you would. Praise the Lord. It's, it's, this kind of act is almost like a dedication to God that will move us from our mind to the heart in our spirit of worship. This is done enthusiastically with force and it is done publicly. It is usually coupled with the words, he's great and greatly to be praised. <laughs> when you say that God is great and greatly to be praised, you are connecting yourself with the power of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You can feel the power of, of in your praise when you worship him like this. You, if you don't believe it, I want you to praise him right now and I want you to feel the power of connecting to the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you. All right, I told you uh, the team that they were going to have a little break. All right, get up here because I need you now. <clears throat> Somebody shout, there's power in praise to the Lord. Uh oh, there's power in praise to the Lord. Uh, okay, so another scripture that I pulled up is Psalms 104. I should have actually had you guys stay up here, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get there. Uh, Psalms 104, you've heard this many times. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. The word thanksgiving there is the word tada, and it means a praise of thanksgiving. It, it's basically agreeing by, uh, with the covenant or by the covenant with what has been done or what will be done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This, this, this word here, uh, this, this praise uh, is, is, is usually with the extension of the hands. It is, it is, a, is a praise of thanksgiving. And, it's, and there's two types of praise in this or two types of ways to extend your hand in this. And the implication is the hands are being extended uh, like this. Do that with me. We're going to practice. And when you hold your hands up like that, cuffed, cuffed now, not outward, but like this. It means that you're expecting God to minister to you and to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. But if the hands are extended, not cuffed, but this way. Come on, let me see you do it. We're practicing praying. It really means this. It's an adoration. It's reverence. It's worshiping God and saying that you are so thankful for all he is and all he's done for you. Somebody give him praise in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Now I need my music. I need, I need my drums and everything. I mean, if I can make it work out. Uh, okay. All right. So then Psalms 150 and 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. The word for praise there is halal and it is a celebration praise it means to shine 
to make a show, to boast, and thus to be clamorously foolish and to rave and to celebrate. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Hello is a celebration praise. Glory to God. It means when it says to shine, it doesn't mean to shine hypocritically, but it means to brag on the Lord. Hallelujah. You remember my mother used to say, now quit cutting the shine out there. You, you got to quit cutting the shine. This is saying, cut a shine unto the Lord. This is saying, the word halal means to be clamorously foolish. Of course, that's in the eyes of the Lord. It is an expression of praise that we translate in English as halal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Halal is to hallelujah in the presence of the Lord. When you say halal, you're saying to worship him in celebration, to, be, to worship him to the point that the world would think you're foolish. Hallelujah. And it means you're praising the Lord, Jah or Yah or Yahovah. Hallelujah. Somebody say it with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. That means praise the Lord. That's what it means. Praise the Lord. It means, uh, where do we find this? We find this in the, in the scripture that says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It, it, in other words, look at your neighbor right now and see if they're breathing. Hold your hand up to their mouth and see if they're breathing. See if, 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 if they're breathing, if they're breathing, then this applies to them. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. When you say, well, you know, I'm not necessarily a Christian. No, 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 that doesn't, that, this applies to everything that has breath. I mean, everything that has breath. Well, you know, I, I don't like to get excited like that. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit more reserved, you know, in, in my worship. You know, people will think I'm crazy. Well, what halal is, is crazy praise. I, I know that sounds funny. I know that sounds funny. But when it says halal, it means Man, you are so excited, and you don't care what the world thinks about it. You're going to praise him no matter what anybody says. If you've got breath, you ought to praise him. Sandra, Lord, you're worthy. come over here. Lord, you're worthy. Might seem a little crazy. Come on now. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him on the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath Seem a little crazy. Might seem a little crazy. But Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. It might seem a little crazy. But Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Might seem a little crazy. But Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. You might seem a little crazy. 
right, hold it right there, hold it right there. Psalms 149.3, the very next one, goes in conjunction with this. It says, let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and the harp. The sing praises, the, those two words is actually one word in the Hebrew. It's the word zabar. It means a melodious praise. It means to touch the strings or part of a musical instrument. Hallelujah. David, when he wrote this, he was oftentimes playing with his harp. And when you get on an instrument and you play the instrument and you sing along with it, this is Zamar. Somebody shout Zamar. Hallelujah. So we want him to, I want you to play something. Come on, I want you to play those drums louder, louder, louder. Turn him up. Yeah. Oh. Praise him with the loud cymbals, it says. Praise him on high sounding cymbals. Praise him with the tambourine. Praise him with the instruments. Come on, let me hear you play. Come on, turn it up. Turn him up, turn him up, turn him up. Come on, come on, play, play, play. This is Zamar. This is Zamar. It's it's melodious. It means taking that gift God's given you and, and worship the Lord. You know, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Psalms 59, 17 says, Unto thee, O my strength, that will I sing. And my God is my defense and the God of mercy. And then, Psalms 22, 3. Psalms 22, 3. Thou, but thou art holy. O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. The word praises there is Tehillah. We talked about it Wednesday. Tehillah is a singing praise. It is a praise that God inhabits and enthrones himself in. It is a spontaneous new song. It is a song that's sung spontaneously that the Lord gives you at the moment. With, turn me up, turn me up on the monitor. That the Lord gives you at the moment and you begin to praise him to praise him hallelujah with the praise that the lord's given you through the spirit so what does that mean that means it's the first time you're doing it it's the first time you're saying it. this is tahila the second time you do it it becomes zamar what we just talked about but the first time you do it it's Tahila. And it and when you do it, hallelujah, when you sing praise, when you sing praise that comes right now, in the moment, whatever you're going through, then God will inhabit your praise. Sandra, give me an example. Give me an example. Whatever God's giving you now. There is freedom in your presence, Lord. There is freedom. Or you might be saying, you might say today, well, 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 how can I do that? I cannot sing. Well, let me tell you, you've heard me say this before. God, in, in recording, we have a thing that's called a tuner. A tuner is, no matter how bad you sound, when you sing through a tuner, everything will just go right on pitch. Uh, in, fact, in, in fact, John Travolta, when he did the musical Grease, uh, he, he, John Travolta cannot sing. So they, they had him sing through a tuner and it came out perfect. 
And let me tell you something. When you sing unto the Lord a new song, when you sing Tahila unto the Lord, when you sing to him and you say, well, I'm, I'm not a good singer. I'm kind of tone deaf, you might say. But you know the way God hears it, when it gets into the atmosphere, it comes through like a tuner. And it sounds good to him. And he loves it when you praise him. You see, God thinks you're awesome. You understand this? God thinks you're, he loves you. He sees, you might see someone struggling. The world might see someone struggling, but God sees you in prosperity. God sees, uh, others see failure, but God sees success. You are a prized possession to him. You are the apple of his eye. He loves you. And when you start singing unto the Lord, he loves it. Ryan, I want you to stand up here. And I want you to every once in a while give JT a break because we're going to work him today. We're going to work you today. Well, I want you. To, I want to do tag team drummer. Now, another scripture. I think that's about as far as we got on Wednesday. Another scripture. scripture Psalms 117 and one says this. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise you, the Lord. The word for praise here is the word Shabak. Somebody say Shabak. Shabak means to address in a loud tone, a loud adoration, a, a shout. Proclaim with a loud voice, Unashamed, the glory, the triumph, the power, the mercy, the love of God. This word implies that your shout is a shout of a testimony, a shout of praise, like a, a, a testimony. When, 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 the, when the word says, shout unto the Lord, shout unto the Lord, this is the word Shabbat. When the word says, clap your hands, all you people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. This is Shabbat. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel the presence of the Lord. When the, in Psalms 145, uh, 145, 4 says, one generation shall praise Shabbat thy works to another and declare your mighty acts. From one generation to the other, it's time that we need to declare the works of the Lord, not in a silent way, but in a way that says, He is awesome. It's not just being loud. It's, it's the attitude of putting your whole being into it. An attitude of being totally uninhibited about it. Psalm 63, 3 says, because your loving kindness, kindness is better than life, my lips shall shabak you. My lips shall praise you. Thus will I bless thee while I live. So let's do it right now. We're practicing praise. I want somebody to give him a shabak. I explained it to you. A shabak. What is it? It's a loud, uninhibited praise, a testimony to the world that says, God has blessed me. God has touched me. God has delivered me. Sing, Sandra. Okay, okay, the next scripture. Take a break because you're gonna need it, what's coming up. The next scripture, Luke 10, 21. 
In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, it seemed good in your sight. What's, what's going on here? What's happening? What's Jesus talking about? Let me explain it to you. The disciples went out and, and, and in the name of Jesus, they were casting out devils. They were, they, were, they were laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. They come back all excited, all excited, and said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us to your name. And then Jesus responded to them and said, hey, don't get excited about this. Get excited about the fact that your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, but wait a minute. Then Jesus went aside and he got to thinking about it. And then in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, oh, Father, Lord in heaven, you've hid this from the wise. You've hid this from people that think they, they know it all. And you've given it to babies. In other words, those that are not mature, those that really, they're, they're just like little babies in the kingdom. And you've allowed this to happen, and this is what Jesus, basically Jesus did. He looked up and said, Lord, you are something. And he got so excited about that God would do this, that Jesus himself, right here it is, a galliallo, jumped for joy. That's what it means. The Son of God began to jump for joy because God has revealed this kind of thing to folks like us. Hallelujah. So, we're practicing praise. Uh, I want somebody right now to get on your feet and to jump for joy for everything that God has done for you. Sandra, sing it. standing because, because, because the next one, the next scripture, 2 Samuel 6, 14, and David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. The word danced is karar. Somebody shout karar. What is happening here? Why is David dancing? The reason David is dancing is because the Ark of the Covenant, which had been stolen, is coming back home. The Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of the Almighty Holy God. That's the way he revealed himself in the Old Testament. In that Ark, God's presence was there when the a high priest came into the place called the Holy of Holies and his presence, manifest presence was there. And David, when he saw it coming home, David, the Bible says, began to whirl. Oh, I don't want to get too dizzy. Woo! Now, why should we dance? Here's why. The Ark of the Covenant considered God's presence was a place that only the high priest could go into to offer sacrifices. But after the Holy Ghost came, after Jesus said to tarry in Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high, 
you will be endued with this power that will cause you to be witnesses to the world. When that happened, our covenant God no longer had an ark of the covenant to go through, but now God himself through the Holy Ghost is in us. The covenant is in us. We ought to be, we ought to be dancing unto the Lord. I want somebody to whirl. I want somebody to whirl. At least one time. Maybe two. Yeah. You say, well, you know what? You know what? I don't know if I can do that. But what? You know, we talked about just a moment ago, Jesus jumping for joy. Now let me give you another one. Zephaniah 317. The Lord your God is in your midst. A warrior who saves. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love. What does that mean, be quiet in his love? It means make no mention of your past sins. He will rejoice over you with the shouts of joy. The word rejoice there is the word gehil. It means to spin around under the influence of a violent emotion. This is God himself who's, why is he doing this? He's saying, this is a prophetic scripture that one day when, we, when we're all before him and we're all redeemed, God is gonna look out at us who, and we are his treasure and he's gonna be proud of us and God himself is going to whirl around with violent emotion. That's how much he loves you. Woo! All right, we're getting ready to come in for a landing here. It sounds like a landing, you know what I mean? I don't know, let me, let me see. Yeah, I'll read it, I'll read it. The next scripture, you may be seated for a moment. Colossians 2.15. This is talking about Jesus. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us, he made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal procession, having triumphant triumph over them through the cross. What is this? This scripture means that when Jesus was on the cross, when he went to the cross, the world thought that they were done with him. The Pharisees and Sadducees thought that they were through with him. Pilate thought they were done with him. The, the, the devil and his demons thought they were done with him. But on the third day after they put him in the tomb, glory to God, Jesus rose from the grave and become tri became triumphant over every demon and devil of hell. He took back the keys of hell and death and he walked in a triumphal procession out of the grave. Triumph, it means to celebrate a victory. The word triumbeo, to celebrate, to, to, to conquer, to have an acclaimed procession. Because he went to the cross, we now have triumph. Paul tells us why. Paul the apostle tells us why. Paul said, that we are more than conquerors through him, that loved us, uh, through him that loved us. The word more than conquerors is the word hupernikaho. 
And it means way beyond. It means super conquerors. It means to vanquish beyond, to have a decisive victory. And Paul said, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God has made us through the cross because Jesus overcame, we can overcome anything the devil throws at us, hallelujah, and we can celebrate the victory. Somebody ought to celebrate that victory. Somebody ought to celebrate that victory. All right. The last scripture. Now, all this, all this is, is a warm-up. Not a, you know, the beginning, the start of the series. You don't want to miss next week. We're going to talk about God speaking to us. God talking to us. God being a part of our lives. We're talking about that next week. In the third week, we're going to talk about how we can worship outwardly. We can worship to the community. We can worship to those that are in need. It's all worship, worship, worship. And then lastly, we're going to def- break the chains of the devil. We're going to defeat the devil and, and show how we can do it through worship in the last one. But here's the last scripture. It came to pass, Joshua 6.16. At the seventh time when the priest blew the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, shout for the Lord has given you the city. The word shout there is ruah. Somebody say ruah. Shout it up. Ruah. So what did he say? He said, he said this. He said, after you hear the trumpet sound, when the priest blows the trumpet, blew the trumpet, Joshua said, shout to the Lord. Understand this. This ruah is a declaration of victory. The walls had not come down yet. The walls were still in place. These mighty, huge fortresses of walls were still in place. But yet God said to Joshua to tell them, Shout, for you, the Lord has given you this city. Shout in advance, for the Lord has given you this city. Shout in advance. So the, so the priest blew the trumpet. Can I get a trumpet sound? trumpet sound shout for the Lord has given you this city it's it's a it's a shout it says in those split ears it's a shout of alarm a shout of joy it's to say we're making a joyful noise it's a shout that's pretty good that's pretty good do it again Sandra Do it, do it one more time and really loud. All right, here we go. For seven days they marched around the walls of Jericho. Seven days they marched around. On the seventh day, God said, march around seven more times. And on the seventh time, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. What if they'd have quit on the sixth time? 
What if they'd have said, well, you know, this ain't working. Those people think we're crazy. Marching around their wall, those walls. Who are those crazy nuts? Who are those crazy people that's marching around the walls of Jericho? Are they crazy? That's what people say when you come to church. They say, why do they go to church and lift their hands and praise? There's something wrong with those people. Is that, is that a trumpet? What is wrong with those people they were saying? What if they say, well, we can't take the criticism. We can't take the criticism. You know what? We're just going to quit right now. What if they stopped on the fifth one? What if they stopped on the sixth one? What if they stopped before the seventh one? But no, you know what they did? Even in the middle of their trouble, even in the middle of the oppression, even in the middle of stuff, even in the middle of everything going wrong, they kept marching. They kept marching. They kept marching. See, there's a time to talk. There's a time to shout. And there's a time to be quiet. You know what God told him before that? He said, tell him, don't say a word. Just keep marching. But don't say a word. But just keep marching. Don't say anything. Just keep marching. All right, so here's the way we're going to finale this. I want everybody to stand on your feet. All right, as I come through your row, I want you to follow me. Just follow me. We're going to march around this wall. Come on. Everybody, everybody, everybody in the church, come on. Somebody's going too slow, just push him a little bit. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Keep going. All right, keep going. They marched around on the seventh day, the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time. Keep going, keep following him, keep following him. Keep going. The sixth time. But on the seventh time, on the seventh time, when the, when the horn began to blow, they said, shout. Now I want you to, when I count to three, I want everybody to shout, but listen. I want you to think about your trial, whatever that is. If it's financial, if it's spiritual, if it's, if it's sickness, whatever that is in your life, I want you to shout because God has given you the city. God has given you the miracle. Why we, while you're thinking about that, we want you to also declare, my mother healed. Bill Varner healed. Bill Varner needs a miracle. Teresa Ott needs a miracle. Others in this church need a miracle. Financial, spiritual, mental, emotional. 
I'm going to count to three. And when I do, I want you to shout as loud as you can shout and clap your hands as loud as you can clap them. One, two, three, shout! seats. Keep singing, Sandra. Keep playing. speaking to Joshua, God saying to Joshua, shout, for I've given you the city. Shout, for I've given you the city. time can you worship one more time worship worship Joshua, shout, 
before I've given you the sin. Before it even happened, before, before it even happened, he shout, for I've given you the city. That's how, that's how God works. Mandy, he's saying, I've given you the city. JC, he's saying, I've given you the city. Simon, he's saying, I've given you the city. Giving you the city. God is so good. Before I bring Pastor Todd up here, we're going to worship the Lord. We want you to prepare to worship the Lord with your tithes, your offerings, your gifts of love. I think we've wore everybody out. Everybody's exhausted, but <laughs> we're but but most of them are here. And a uh, little bit down today, but you know what? God is good. And so we, we need to worship him with our tithing, with our offering, with our, with our gifts of love. Let's worship him this morning. Revival for survival. Please don't, if you can, stay around, please, for just a little bit. Uh, we got some things we've got to express to you about what's coming up. Play the uh, Revival for Survival video. Oh, okay. P uh, play, play the, uh, um, the, the Dean concert, the Dean concert. We got these folks coming up the day after uh, Revival First Party. Go from 2.30, go from 2.30. It's the beginning. A man lay on his go from
and we got them coming September the 1st, and that is the day right after, that's the Sunday right after we're having a revival for survival. What a great night revival survival is going to be. Uh, for some reason, uh, uh, we got to get that, make sure they get that video. Did you send it to Matthew? Oh, you do have it? Yes. Addiction. One of the many issues plaguing our city today will finally meet its match. On Saturday, August 31st, from 5 to 10 p.m., we will fill this stadium with those seeking hope to end addiction as we know it. The first ever Revival for Survival will feature evangelist David Allen Hill, formerly known as Nico the Dragon, as he shares his story and how his own addiction to drugs and alcohol nearly ended his life at a young age. I'm preparing the land. I'm setting the table. I'm honoring the effort. There's people that are crying and dying, and people that are addicted, and people that are hopeless. And we gotta do everything we can, why we can, to bring Jesus back so he can take us home. Ride for Life Christian Stunt Motorcycle Team. I was saved four years ago. If I could be saved, anybody can. Award-winning live music by national recording artist Stars Go Dim and Cleveland's own Sandra Payne. You are love. If your heart's in a thousand pieces, if you're lost in the fight from reason, just look up, know you are love. Just look up, know you are love. This event will feature the stories from local families who have lost loved ones to addiction in the hopes of spreading the good news about the hope found in Jesus Christ. But we need your help. Visit our website to register to attend or volunteer and help impact the city of Cleveland and end addiction. We all know someone affected by addiction. It's time to end the pain, struggle, and suffering in our great town. All right. That's going to be an awesome day, Crusher Stadium. On that Saturday, it's going to be fantastic. Pastor Todd and Naomi, come on up here, and we're going to, I want, we got some slides of, I think we've got a VBS, we got slides of the Corn Festival, and we want you to be showing them as they're speaking, but also we want to uh, let uh, Pastor Naomi know that we are praying for her. She just lost her sister who just passed away, and so... We want you to give these guys a great big hand. Such a great part of the ministry. Don't you love them? Pass your time to me. So they're going to show the slides. What a great, great time. Tell us what's happened. And uh, then we're going to do it. Oh, praise the Lord, huh? Appreciate everybody's prayers. Appreciate everybody's prayers for uh, Naomi and her family. Um, but uh, I think that song that <laughs> that we just listened to was did her in. Uh, but it's such a perfect truth. The words to that, uh, you know, we have peace when we get to the end, and we know our fight here is done. We've already got victory, right? Uh, so, amen. So we know that uh, Karen, her sister, was a believer in uh, giving her life to Christ, and uh, she was done fighting, and so now she's... Uh